Thanks for joining us at our comic book coffee break. I'm Nick Gunning. And I'm Eric Mickles. I'm not ready. Just kidding. Not? I am. Oh. <laughs> also known that online as Dust vs. Tweak. Yeah, for a long time now. You know, Eric, I'm drinking Copper Moon's Blast Off blend. It's pretty good. And do you are you are, do you peep this mug? Look at this. This is, is a Mickey's the... Christmas Carol. Yeah. Mickey's Christmas Carol mug. I got this at a thrift store like mm-hmm. ten years ago. It's my most prized possession. I noticed that the sat- the satanic version of Pete as Ghost huh. of Christmas Yet to Come isn't there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it would take That's away some funny. Of the warmth. In the in the storybook, he really is dressed like Satan, but in the actual movie He's just got the hood and everything. He's so scary. He was he scary in that. He was, yeah. We were trying to come yeah. up with a Super Mario Brothers version of Christmas Carol, and huh. I can't decide if it's Wario or Bowser who is Scrooge in the situation, because the other oh. one, I feel like, would have to be Ghost of Christmas yet to come. Yeah. I think it, I think Bowser. You, I, th- I thought that, too, because... Yeah bowser has the koopa kids and they could yeah. take they could all take the role of his nephew yeah fred yeah, yeah they could all yeah. be like yeah i would watch it sure yeah, mario is bob cratchit kendra thinks yeah. toad has to be uh ghost of christmas past yeah that but i think sense. if yeah but also you have baby bowser so maybe baby mm. baby bowser could be ghost of christmas past toad could be no present. I, I think you got to go with toad i mean so are you doing who you doing is jacob marley Oh, that's I feel like one. Luigi's got the build, but the relationship's not there. Yeah, so, yeah, that's true. You know, it's hard to say. Uh, I don't know. There's got to be someone. I mean, there's all those, like, Lakitus and... Yeah. Kipas. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, what else do we say after we introduce our name? I usually say this show's brought to you by the Radio Meanwhile Network. Yeah, and you can find more about this show and others like it on our network's website, radiomeanwhile.com. On what are the other shows on radiomeanwhile.com? 9021, here we go. We just recorded our annual Christmas special, which is coming out on the 17th of December. We looked at the movie USS Christmas, and it was uh, it was a journey. Mm-hmm. It was a journey, and I think we're better having watched the movie now. So listen into that. Even if you're not a fan of 90210, that's just a, that's just a fun takedown of a Hallmark Christmas movie. Mm, yeah. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Here is the place where we talk comics, so let's get comics. to it. Ah. How was your week in comics? Are you still reading comic books that you hate, or have we cycled away from that? I read a various amount of comic books, various types. Yes or no? Of likes Just or no, yes or no. Are you still reading dislikes? comic books that you hate? I did not read a hard some question. comic books I didn't like, yes. And let me ask you this follow-up question. Did you read those comic books going into it knowing that you would not like them? I mean, I read Wicked and Divine Volume 7. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Um, it's not that I, gosh, I don't, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, at this point I've just got two volumes left and I've got them with me. Yeah. I don't remember what happened in this volume. I read hmm. it Monday. Well, that's not a good sign. Monday or Tuesday. I read it Tuesday. I must've read it I Tuesday. Have a, I have a similar one that, that I read. I mean, I won't get into it now, but I was, I was writing it in the doc to tell you the ones I read and I was like, I don't. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what happened in this, so that's not great. But anyway, uh, what? so what's first on your docket? Oh, maybe, is this the one where we find out the past setup? Like, how everything got set up? With Like, there's a rules to the way these gods will be fighting or something, mm-hmm. and maybe the character we've been following is s- different than the character we thought we were following, and everybody was in a cage at one point, and then they get out of a cage... Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that seems on brand. There's some characters living underground. I don't remember what happened in this, but I do okay. remember being kind of interested and then not interested. Okay. Sometimes there's world well, so building stuff I get into. At least you were kind of interested. That's yeah. something. Uh, I don't know what to say about it. I, I'm i just along for the ride at this point. There's two more volumes. I thought I was going to finish it this week, but they're thick volumes, and I didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I read them on my lunch break you. because they tend to mm-hmm. fill out the lunch break. So yeah, t- we'll finish it next week. Wicked and Divine by uh, Karen Gillan and Jamie McKee- McKelvey. Do you see this, Aquaman? Yes. See this pose? Doesn't it kind of look like he's doing that dance from Whoa. Love Actually, where Hugh Grant is like... Mm-hmm. Oh, sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it also you seems know. like he really wants you to notice that he's been working out his butt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, this? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway. That just that just happens from all the swimming. I don't focus on dance. it. Hugh Grant dance. Yeah. Hugh Grant dance. All right. 
Um, all right, so you got two more volumes of this thing you don't like, and you're going to see it. Through. At this point, I'd, oh, it'd be crazy if I read seven volumes and didn't read the last two. I agree. I, I mean, agree you've with done you. that once yeah. or twice with something, right? I've watched every episode of How I Met Your Mother, and that show stopped being good at the halfway point. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Lost fans. I but see, here's the thing. Oh. How I Met Your Mother, no. you enjoyed it the first half. Yeah. I never That's enjoyed this. That's a good point. What's That's an example? I guess this is closer to Gotham, but at some point, Gotham did turn around and I was enjoying it. So I don't mm. know what to say. I don't know. I don't know. There's other stuff I haven't liked. I'm like, I'm never reading this again. I don't know why I kept going. I guess I thought it would yeah. get better. And it never yeah. did. And then I was just too in. I was just too into it. I kept thinking the water would get shallow again eventually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Then before you mm-hmm. know it, I'm drowning and swallowing seawater. In a, in a weird coincidence, I w- I've been listening to our, our podcast, The All the Book Show, you know, and at one point I just I just was got way behind. So I'm still like listening to some back episodes that we did forever ago. And I was just listening to episode 200 where you were talking about having just finished Gotham and how you and author David Dvorkin bonded on Twitter about how terrible it was. Mm-hmm. And at that point, you said Gotham had negatively rewired your brain. So I'm just wondering, did it ever untangle? I don't think so. I think okay. it's still there. Sometimes I things I say something or I think something. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a post Gotham Gotham thought. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a new Gotham world. It's just um, too much. Yeah, it did rewire my brain in a negative way. In a way that even yeah. my therapist was like halfway through the series, she's like, maybe you should just stop watching this show. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's a Batman show. <laughs> Hey, there are novels. Do you want me to get... Oh, no, Christmas is coming no, up. No, Do you want me to get... No. I'd be happy to. I would be happy to. I'm, Please, I'm out of the world pleasure. of Gotham. It would be my pleasure. Yeah. Thinking of Speaking of watching things that are dumb, I want to talk to you about something that I watched, and that is a DVD copy of Transformers. Yeah. I let the this last slide night. because it's based, this is, these have been comic books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I Otherwise, figured, I know. would never want to talk about The Last Night. I know you don't want to talk about it, but you know, I mean, we have we have some history together on uh, the Transformers. Did we ever watch a Transformers movie together in theaters? No, I don't think we have any history with these. Think well, the only history battleship. <laughs> no, the only history we have together is when we were recording uh, the Island of Doctor Moreau. Yes, three nice that's things. That's the history, and then you that turned on the fourth movie. That movie upset me so much that I turned on what's the, what's that one called? The Age of one? Extinction. Age of Extinction. Yeah. Age of Extinction. Which okay. I had watched, and it yeah. felt like the longest movie in my life. Yes. Well, okay. So I mean, I watched all three of the first Transformer movies at a drive-in theater, like as they came out. The first one I think is decent. The second one I think is racist, and the third one I think is terrible. Um, then I didn't watch the next two, and I watched Bumblebees in theaters, and I'm like, that was just fine. But after that, after that Island of Dr. Moreau, I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch Transformers Age of Extinction. And that one I watched over the course of like three days, so it was like a TV miniseries for me. Oof. And it has some redeeming qualities. It has some good action, and like I like Marky Mark, so it's fine. This one, I can't. I've got... <laughs> I, there's nothing good that I can say about it. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. I was worried about nothing. you with this one. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. I just don't. I mean, it is so long. Mm-hmm. It's so very long. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like when you break it down, when you think about it, it's like Optimus Prime comes back evil. And like, that could be cool. That could be a cool story. And they go like they have this whole like subterranean. They have to go underwater and then like underground. So there's like mini sub trying to find these like ancient submerged transformers. And in that moment, I was like, OK, this is cool. Marky Mark gets like an augment so he can like make a sword appear and like sword fight transformers. And I'm Great. like, there's a there's a world in which that could be fun. But this is not that world. You know who I so, never needed to see hold a sword? Mark Wahlberg. Marky Mark. He's not the guy Another. that you hand a sword to. Another weird thing is in the Age of Extinction, Stanley Tucci plays a pretty big role as a quasi-villainous character. This one starts uh, during the time of King Arthur, and Stanley Tucci is there playing Merlin, but it has nothing to do with his character from the previous movie, and it was just very confusing. Also, Anthony Hopkins is in this movie. Like, what? I I don't... I don't understand. I don't understand these movies at all, and I don't really know, like, what comes next, so... I don't Nothing. know. Do you have a Nothing favorite? Do you have a favorite of the Transformer series? Of these movies? Yes. No. I mean, the first one, yes. I enjoyed the first one so much yeah. that when it was over and I saw another movie I had been wishing it was the first Transformers movie. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. To be fair, that was Licensed to Wed. and I had, You love that movie. You know, 
Uh, Every I, time I turn around, it's right there. It's I did see the first Transformers uh, a second time in theaters and had a good time okay. with that. And uh, yeah. yeah, I thought it, it was bad, but also kind of good. And yeah. then I hit, obviously, yes, the second one is terrible, but I actually had a fun time at the third movie, but I haven't ever rewatched it. Yeah. So, but I like one of the songs from, I like a piece of music from the third one. I don't think that I've seen a single one of the Transformer movies more than once. Yeah, that's probably so. Better. That's anyway, good. but I'm done now. I've yeah. seen them all because I watched the last night. Congratulations. I put that really low on the list. But I, like I said, mm-hmm. Age of Extinction had some moments where I was like, yeah, okay, Marky Mark, let's do this. You what's, got your good vibration. What's let's a, do what's a, <laughs> I don't think he what? likes you bringing that up. Why not? I, I think he hates when you bring a funky bunch. The funky bunch? Yeah, no. I'm not, I don't think he's a fan. What well, is a comic you read? Oh, you want to talk about a comic? Yeah. Well, let's, all right. I guess we can do that. <laughs> Uh, I finished The Eternals. I finished The Eternals by one Jack Kirby. Mm -hmm. And this is 19 issues. I'd read the first volume a while back. And while the first volume I felt like was actually a little bit more structured and coherent than some of the like real like out there Kirby stuff tends to be like you had a real like there's the Eternals, there's the Celestials, you know, like you had a whole thing that made sense to me. I didn't particularly like it. But like it was it was interesting and it was sort of like, OK, let's see where this goes. The second volume to me was incoherent. Like I I don't hmm. I couldn't tell you what happened in this. And also the Incredible Hulk shows up and it is yeah. so jarring. Oh. And possibly it's a Hulk robot. I don't know. The hmm. point is, like having Hulk there, I feel like only made like the weirdness of the Eternals that much more like in your face. Hmm. So. The story was incoherent and like the fight with Hulk kind of like it took up a lot of time. It didn't feel super connected to the story. And when it was over, I was kind of like, what was that all about? Hmm. So the conclusion of this kind of made me like the first volume even less. I'm I'm not a big Eternals fan. All right. That's that's where I'm coming out of this. I've never read the Neil Gaiman stuff and I never read that. There's been a couple of Eternals like miniseries and stuff. Right. Um, I don't, I'm never, I'm never particularly like latched onto those. I actually think Denny O'Neill's Iron Man was the first time I ever was introduced to the Eternals. Mm. Uh, so I don't know. It's hard to imagine that being a movie, especially like in the in the cinematic universe. So I guess we'll uh, see what happens. Yeah. But this was kind of a thumbs Maybe. down for. Me. Who knows? Who knows what the future holds for any movies? Good point. Twenty twenty is just the year of uh, cast announcements and logo reveals. That's yeah. the only thing we've yep. had for movies this year. Oh my gosh, I know. All those those Disney things, it was like I couldn't even oh, keep yeah. up with it. I guess, like how many series? Yeah, oh my gosh. Stuff. Did you see I somebody I was gonna bring this up with you. Uh we don't have to talk long if you don't want to, but you are constantly trying to be a Fantastic Four fan. It's like <laughs> it's something you've tried for well, years. Almost as long as I've I known have, you, you have yes. tried to get to the point where you should be like, I like the Fantastic Four. Um, Never been able to. They've announced a new Fantastic Four movie. The guy who's done the new Spider-Man movies is directing it. I don't know. Yeah. How, how do you feel? There's been... <laughs> I, the only thing... Like, I really, truly really think the only thing that I would be genuinely excited about is if they announced they were doing, like, a, 1960s, a period yeah. 1960s Fantastic Four. I would be mm-hmm. all about that. Just hearing that, like, another, like, group of tweens is going to come and be the Fantastic Four, I don't know. I, no, I have trouble caring about that. Okay, I was wondering. I yeah. I don't know. I just, I mean, I ended up buying the Tim Story Fantastic Four movies on Blu-ray. They came in a double pack. Because I was like, yeah. I don't think they're ever going to get better than this. <laughs> Probably not. So, Probably maybe not. they will, but, uh, yeah, I yeah. don't know. I And like you, yeah, it's like, unless the Fantastic Four are the first, it's hard to care. Yeah. So. Oh, so they're all related to each other, and they drive around in a space car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They just fit in I, this world I like where, it like, even less when they have kids. Like we're in, we're, we're in like the Franklin Richards era. I'm just like. But you can no, relate to you. them now. Oh, I know I can. Yeah. yeah. It, what yeah. your son is kind of like Franklin, always getting into trouble. Yeah. Always, yeah. always and, trying. The mutant X Men are always trying to be like, he's a mutant. He needs to join yeah. us. They're like, leave him you alone. Know what? And I have a brother. And you are my best friend, but you're rocky emotionally, like the oh thing. Gosh. You know what I mean? Like your heart's uh-huh. a stone. So uh-huh. it's like it all kind of uh, right. it all kind of gels. I'm not super excited about it. I have to say, I genuinely thought it was a joke <laughs> when I saw a tweet that was like Hayden Christensen returns as Darth uh, Vader. Yeah. I was like, oh, good, well, finally. You know, <laughs> actually, but that's true. Um, 
That's a fact. I thought, like, that's weird he's coming back as Vader, but somebody pointed out, like, it's all it's for the Kenobi show, so he's probably coming yeah. back in flashbacks. Oh, yeah. Which I thought maybe. made more sense. So we yeah, just have to de-age I guess. him. I maybe guess. not. Maybe he'll be in the Vader outfit. Sorry. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you don't care about the prequel stuff. So. Uh, not particularly. Yeah. I mean, I'll watch I'll watch an Ewan McGregor Star Wars yeah. show, definitely, but well, that was not one. My issue with most Star Wars stuff is that it's always sur- centered around the three movies, and yeah. they have not <laughs> diverted yeah. from that at all. That's true. Uh, do you I care about also... Rogue Squadron? Not particularly. Okay. I don't know. You know, honestly, I, I guess I just feel like I'm a little done with Star Wars movies, you know? Yeah. Like, you got your the Mandalorian, I think... terrible movie that you love more than anything, and burnt the rest of us into the ground and now you're good now you're fine Me? now that what are you we're just a radioactive shadow i know it's not what do you i didn't do anything no you're just the person i can verbally attack right now because i liked the force awakens is that no what the is third about? one okay i no it's fine I, it's fine i don't want to fight about last gen okay. I, not last gen right. the other one i don't want to yeah, fight about the new ones but yeah. yes you were saying the mandalorian and stuff yeah i don't know well, why just just that i feel like the mandalorian shouldn't have worked but somehow did but to go from like the mandalorian to 10 star wars shows that's i don't know to me it's like we're getting into cw tv era you know where everything's just going to coalesce into there is a lot crossovers there's too many there's too many to pay attention i don't i was never i mean i know i know rogue one is like high on everyone's list and it was never one that really like appealed too much to me i'm that's the show i'm maybe most puzzled about the the cassian andor prequel oh yeah I guess it's just like two things now where you know he ends up dead. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't really. I don't know. I don't get it. Are it's there any everything. other shows? Uh, I mean, I know. I'll see. It, it all depends on. Like, I thought I was excited for The Mandalorian, and then it became a very different show. Mm. And it's just hard. It's like, boy, I can't wait to see how all these characters interact in the movies. Oh wait, I know. they yeah. don't. <laughs> right. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we're angering chat. Really? No, we're angering a, a certain. Uh, uh, bow wearing chat member huh giant bow wearer okay. yeah okay prequel fan all right oh your, your co-host i can't i can't with the prequels all right any let's talk comics oh right frick well i i said the eternals what yes do you want all to talk right about? i read wonder woman dead earth i'll talk about something i liked hey okay yeah yeah hey now let me ask you did because... you just become a early like 60s disney musical you just became the parent trap hey hey oh yeah 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 <laughs> let's yeah. get together <laughs> no i i want to know if uh because you thought i was crazy when i said that like, it would it would sit well on a shelf with uh, like frank miller's dark knight and stuff what, what did you think about that oh my you? gosh i think i even said that in my review on goodreads really I, yeah so more power you to you there on this kind of thing i said Daniel Johnson has made a pretty strong competitor for the Dark Knight Returns when it comes to Elseworld futures. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's not its not like it seems like those two go together, but I feel no. like they sort of occupy a similar space. Yeah, yeah, this, I mean, it's, uh, this this book is crazy. If, yeah. uh, so what is, uh, da, 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 under the DC Black Label, this is by Daniel Warren Johnson, who also does the art then? I think so. Um, if, if he's not inspired by 80s anime, I'll eat my Incredible Hulk t-shirt right yeah. now. Uh, okay. It, it's crazy. It, it feels just like that. It reminds me of, like, Fist of the North Star, a little bit of Akira when it comes to the body horror. It Like, the, the lettering has this crazy, like, punk rock kind of feel to yeah. it. Very underground comic stylings. Has, like, I... a, a future, like, post-apocalyptic Conan the Barbarian mm-hmm. feel to it. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, most often, I think a complaint that I have a lot, you know, it, it, whether in anything, in, in any media, novels, movies, graphic novels, mm-hmm. I hate when there's, when, when tonally things don't all go together. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's about the highest compliment I can give this mm. one, that everything, everything from the art to the yep. story to the lettering, everything about it is yep. completely cohesive. And so, like, like it or not, it is a very well put together yeah. uh, piece of piece of work here. Yeah, and I I've this. I've only read it. Um, I yeah, got an advanced screener right. copy with a watermark, you know, mm-hmm. and everything. So I'm really looking forward to uh, when my library gets in the uh, the full size. Yeah, the hardcover hard was nice. Think, yeah, uh, nice nice panels. The art really popped. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's flashbacks to how the world got like this that are good. There's some twists mm-hmm. that I did mm-hmm. not see coming. Yeah. Um, 
there are some reveals and uh yeah i had a good time this it really does you're right you were right to say dark knight returns because it feels like wonder woman's dark knight returns yeah in a lot of ways but not in a way that feels like oh they're just trying to be the dark dark knight returns no it's like you said it's just occupying that space but it's its own yeah. crazy yeah. unique thing so yeah i had this, a... this is what i mean reading this like as a superman fan reading this made me all the more frustrated that all we have you know, to, to sort of occupy that same level of things is is Frank Miller's Superman Year One. Like, I want, I want a Superman story that could sort of go with this, and that's you know. I feel like you could say All Star Superman, but All Star Superman is yeah. much longer, yeah. and it's it's still more like traditional Superman. Mm-hmm. Like it, mm-hmm. it kind of has like a finality, a finale, oh boy, a finality to it, but it's not. Yeah, it's not the same kind of like Superman's. Like this Earth is crazy now. Mm-hmm. So I was on the fence and, and again, like my visually mine wasn't ideal to be figuring this out. What did you think as far as Wonder Woman's age? Like how old I couldn't, she was supposed to be? Well, oh. I couldn't tell if we were going for sort of a teenage vibe or if she was supposed to be like a full fledged. No, I, like, think she, yeah, I think she's supposed to be a full fledged Wonder Woman because of okay. her interaction with the League and everything. That's true. Um, yeah. yeah. I guess just here. the art sometimes made it seem, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, the art has, she kind of has like those big Disney-esque eyes sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and you know what it made me think of? Was it just last week where we did the Commandy for the, no, it was two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Two weeks ago on Comic Book sure. Coffee Break, we did Commandy yeah. as a uh, as the quarter bin. Yeah. And it also had some of a Commandy vibe to it as okay. well. I think just the, the, the post-apocalyptic yeah. setup and this, some of the looks had that. You, you say frustrated about Superman. This makes me frustrated that I, I read this. I'm like, oh, hey, it's a DC black label that isn't batman or the joker Mm -hmm. or harley quinn right uh and then i look at the things that are coming i'm like oh they're all that again the ones that are coming i can't i can't yeah i mean i'll read them all i just got i just put uh my library copy of batman three jokers is waiting for me at the library right Mm. now well you know it's kind of like the dc animated movies they make the one wonder woman with carrie russell Mm -hmm. and like because it wasn't like as high selling as some of the superman batman that that came before it was just like scrap it we're not going yeah. to invest in this at all just yeah. batman 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 yeah no this is this, this is sweet oh uh, yeah i agree well i'm glad you liked it that's cool uh what else you read nick what else did i read um well i guess i'll stick with marvel then for a second this is the one that i truly can't remember much about i finished off the uh ed brubaker captain america and not the one that everybody likes this one to me feels like an afterthought I don't know. It, yeah, it is weird that he stuck around to do this because they're just so different than what he's done, but also boring yeah. to what he's done. Yeah. This this to me feels like when you're reading a long run and it's like you go from one one creative team for like 40 issues and then you have like, OK, well, the new team's not going to come in for another five or six issues. So we just need somebody to kind of like bridge this gap. That's what this entire four volume series felt like was that little like don't make any impacts on the character don't change the paradigms too much just get us through until we start the new wave but i mean this was a number one this wasn't like it was continuing like they started this series Mm -hmm. and to me it was just a spinning wheel the whole time so i i don't have anything good to say about it i guess i don't really have anything bad to say about it it was just kind of a waste of time i did write something about it saying that uh it's not great but I did like that the 1950s Captain America had a nice send off. Yeah. I don't remember any of that in context, but apparently yeah. that's how I felt when I read this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's dealing with, with issues from, from that era, certainly, uh-huh. uh, you know, a, a big hydro presence and things. And so, yeah, I mean, I guess I could see why you'd say that, but it just, to me, I don't know, especially cause I, I've been also, you know, reading off like the classic Stanley, uh, reading through the Marvel masterworks of Captain America, that stuff is just so much more interesting. So to be, you know, all these years later reading this thing, it's just sort of like, and then Hydra shows up and Captain America throws his shield mm-hmm. for, you know, whatever this was, 20, 25 issues was, was uh, not great. So mm-hmm. I'm not really sure where to go from here, Captain America wise, because I've read, I've read some of the stuff where it's like, oh no, he was really a Hydra agent the whole time. Uh, I've read some of that. I've read some of the Sam Wilson Captain America, but I haven't like gotten from there to Sam taking over yet. I haven't gotten to the point where Steve's aging picks up again. Like I, so I'm not really sure what happens Doesn't in between. Does Mark Wade take over? Is that where I'm at? Next, 
and I, John Romita I mean, Jr. I trust doing you. the art. I think that's where I read I trust I read you next. on all Marvel things. Okay. Well, then um, I'll do it. I think that's the writer as well. Yeah, he he gets uh, he goes into the end zone, not the end you know, zone. I've... Right. Yeah. I've always been. Check out this sweet Captain America. Right. Ciao. That He's so great. bendy. Very Kirby esque with this face, right? Look at oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry, Rick Remender. Oh. So okay. uh, maybe you wouldn't love that. Well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I've uh, always Cast been a Captain Dimension America Z. fan. Yeah. You know, just sort of like abstractly, probably dating back from the old cartoon. And the movie. And the movie, yes. Yeah. That Matt Salinger movie that I watched constantly that we would check out from Blockbuster all the time. Um, but I, I just, it, not until like the last several months have I really like read it with any sort of diligence. So I'm having a good time with it, but I'm preferring the old stuff to mm. certainly to this run. Gotcha. Uh, I read a book called Witches. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about witches. They tend to now, get stitches. Is that spelled the traditional way? No. Oh. It's uh, W-Y-T-C-H-E-S. Oh, okay. So you know it's serious then. Yeah. Witches. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is by Scott Snyder, and the artist is Jacques. Or Jacques. You, can't qu- you can't quit Scott Snyder. Uh, I don't know. You can't. You can't. I like his stuff. You can't. I think he's done for Batman, but I still like his stuff. Well, okay, maybe more or less. I liked American Vampire, but he's like <laughs> given up on that forever. Okay, all right. Um, which is is just a story. It's like six issues. I'm glad it doesn't continue because I wouldn't mm-hmm. be able to keep reading it because it right. is a bit too creepy for me. Oh, and okay. So he, you don't really deal with witches in this. It's really like just monsters in mm-hmm. there that have some connection to witches. Basically, the idea is that the witch you this family uh, promises a child to these witches or these creatures in the what, woods. What kind of setting are we talking about? Is it like modern day? Is it old timey? It's it's modern day. It's it centers okay. around a family, uh, a husband and wife trying to raise their daughter who. Uh, had a terrible experience. Maybe she killed someone. Maybe she didn't. Uh, oh. Where we find out throughout the book, um, and the dad is trying to get that. But meanwhile, she's being haunted by these witch creatures. Okay. Um, but yeah, the art is creepy at times. The uh, the setting is creepy. Once it was over, I was like, well, I never want to read that again, <laughs> or this series. And he hasn't continued it. Scott Snyder seems to have almost like a chris claremont level of uh add when it comes to writing like now i'm gonna mm. be doing this it's like right but are you ever gonna finish american vampire what oh mm. right sure i'll write this oh wait what if witches were monsters mm. um it's spooky i'd suggest this for like a halloween read or something but don't go in Ooh. expecting like witches okay like, people dealing with witches mm-hmm. so well you know how i love a good seasonal read i think this might be too spooky for you okay i think all right We'll see. It, it was too. It was too creepy for me. Seriously, once this was over, because it's good. It's set in like Litchfield, New Hampshire, or I don't know if that's a real town, uh, but it's set in New Hampshire. It has this creepy vibe. It's something that like the quality of both the writing and the art are good that you'd want to follow it, but I wouldn't want to follow it because it was okay. so spooky. Mm-hmm. So same reason I never kept reading Lock and Key after reading the first oh, volume. I'm like yeah, oh, yeah, too scary. Mm-hmm. So sorry, Joe Hill. Yeah. No thanks, Mister. Yeah. Also, Boy, tell your let's dad see. to edit. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for next Halloween, Eric. Are we getting? Now listen. Are we going to do another Stephen King Halloween book as we've done every year for the past seven years, or yeah. do we need to move on and pick a new author? I think we could f- still fit in a King. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk DC for a minute because I did read a few DC things. One is called The Flash. The Silver Age Volume One, and this is a this is a massive collection of of Silver Age Flash, uh-huh. and it was actually pretty good. I I've had this. I bought this from Barnes and Noble like on my Nook forever ago. They were doing they were doing. I was gonna say a flash sale, <laughs> but they were doing. They had like a quick little like weekend sale of DC Comics, and so this was like four dollars or something like that. But it's like four hundred pages of like early Flash stories, so I've had it forever. Mm-hmm. And this was one that I downloaded onto my phone. So if I'm just like trying to kill time or something, I would read through. So I've actually been sort of reading through this one for months now, but I finished it up and it's good. You know, it feels a lot more cohesive than, 
you know, even even some of the mainstream, like more mainstream titles like Superman or even Batman at the time, um, it still has that Silver Age goofiness to it. But it's a little bit more because Barry's a Barry's a scientist, you know, so it's just a little bit more grounded, I feel like. Uh-huh. Um, he's he's just an ordinary forensic scientist to the yeah, rest of the world is. anyway. Right, yeah. But this has basically the introduction of all the rogues. It has the introduction of Kid Flash. It has a lot of really, like, landmark issues Mm -hmm. of the series. And it was interesting to see the rogues pop up for the first time because that's one thing I feel like anybody who reads Flash comics or is familiar with the character, the the rogues gallery for Flash is always put up there pretty high. Yeah. And while reading this, it kind of dawned on me that I feel like that's just because they stuck with them, you know, like, because reading them, reading the first, like Captain Cold or Mirror Master or whatever, reading the first one to me didn't really feel any different than many of Superman's one-off villains. Mm -hmm. You know, during this time, it was like every week you'd get some crazy new like supervillain to come and fight Superman, but they never invested in them. That's why Superman only basically has Lex, Mm -hmm. you know, Lex, Parasite, Toy Man, I guess you want to put in there. Like, it's not a big group, Brainiac of Superman's, you know, rogues. And I think it's because they never really, like, let those simmer. It would be like, one, done. One, done. Mm-hmm. Whereas Flash would take these characters that their origins are really on par with some of these others that uh, that didn't stick around. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, I mean, they just kept bringing them back. And that's, yeah. I think, how we got, that's how we got how we are. And there's not really much of a hierarchy either. You know, when you compare it to, like, Batman, you know, obviously it's like the Joker, you know, and then like a sort of a pyramid coming down. Mm-hmm. But who who would you say is Flash's like primary nemesis? See, I don't even know which reverse Flash I would be talking about in this situation yeah. either. Is it I there's reverse Flash and there's Zoom. Right. So whichever one I'm talking about is the one I would say, but that's just because they're like, you know, the opposites thing. Yeah. Uh but even See, that like, is just like yeah. he's just he's more like he'd be to Flash what like Rachel Ghoul is the Batman. He's like right. the big one who can take Batman right. because he's just so much, he's got so many more resources than the others. So, yeah, I don't know who would be like his joke. I mean, Captain Cold seems to be the one that's positioned as like the leader of the rogues. Yeah. But, I mean, he's just a guy with an ice gun. I would almost give it to Grodd, you know, oh. if I was going to say <laughs> who like the primary Flash that's villain funny. is. I, yeah. Just because I feel like the Grodd stories kind of like hit Flash on a more el- one elemental level. They used in the Justice League cartoon. Of yeah, the Flash villains was Gorilla yeah. Grodd. So, the Grodd introductory stories were were really interesting. They yeah. felt very different hmm. than you know the current Grodd stories. The mm-hmm. the way they all came about, I don't know. It was it was a, more of a Planet of the Apes kind of vibe than mm. than what you get later on. But I liked this. You yeah. know, I mean, I think if you are not used to Silver Age comics, you probably wouldn't like this. Though, hmm. if you wanted to get into Silver Age comics, I would recommend this over. Superman or Batman, sure, because I think it's just the storytelling is is stronger, mm-hmm. uh, better, you know, faster. Um, yeah, but Flash, I think you know, Flash is able to really have its own identity, whereas the the Green Lantern comics of of contemporary times <laughs> were very very much like like 1940s serials, right. like they had that kind of sci fi vibe to it. Whereas Flash, I think, is attempting to be modern and somewhat serious, which is unique for DC at the time. Mm-hmm. So. Flash Archives, Volume 1. Okay. Do you have the second volume near you? I don't. Oh. Sorry. Uh, speaking of rogues galleries. Yes. Speaking of rogues. Speaking, uh-huh. Hey, y'all. Speaking of a whole bunch of uh, villains. Yeah. I finished Tom King's Batman run. Oh, wow. I, and? I finished the last three volumes. One was called Something, and then the other two were City of Bane, Part 1 and 2. Oh, um, you would. Well, think he likes his Bane, doesn't he? He loves his Bane. He loves <laughs> non-realistic dialogue and Bane. Those are his two favorite things. Oh, so Tom it was King. volume eleven was the Fall and the Fallen, and then there were two Bane parts. Two Bane or uh, not? Two. Boy, how to talk I about this? I I think I've only. I don't think I've read any Batman post the wedding. I think that's as far as I've gotten. Right. Um, I don't really know how to talk about this because you would think City of Bane, there would be something about 
the villains taken okay so the villains have taken over the city they've taken okay. over gotham but it's yes. in, it's everything about tom king's run has just been like a a tone poem am i saying that right a tone poem like poetry tone <laughs> sure the idea yeah. that like you're getting feeling and yeah poetry through the art and writing more than you're actually getting a cohesive story like you see one scene where like damien is like i'm gonna fight you and then turn the page and it's just something non not connected mm. to that and then you go back and now damien is just riding his bike off so and it's just like well what happened you, you just that's weird there's always these like jump scenes because he's not telling that kind of story but it's like well what i this is this is not a type of writing i enjoy for the most part i it's it's hard because tom king he's an interesting writer he's done an interesting mm. run on batman that stands very unique from everything else but it's also hasn't been very good i feel like the things i enjoy through his entire run through all 85 issues is their moments or things there's like an issue in there like oh that was fun there's these concepts that you like but then when you're like oh wait but i also had to read like 12 issues with gotham girl and her <laughs> what was her brother's name oh yeah I, just, I don't even remember just you have to read that stuff and then you have to read just this whole like 80 pages of batman and catwoman being like i why do you run cat because why do you chase me bat because you run oh, cat. I remember because the you cat chase bat. me bat cat bat oh bat. just non-stop shut yeah. the hey, f up do you want to start an acapella group called the tone poems the tone Home poems, tones sure, maybe yeah. we need a few more guys yeah. but if you're willing <laughs> hello that's you hi. hello hi <laughs> no you got it wrong how Forget you doing it. i'm taking um, the tone poems anyway, in another direction uh, i think i mentioned before that he also brought in thomas wayne batman Oh, okay. Did I I mentioned this in one of the, the Thomas Wayne Batman is now in the DC universe, and he's oh. he's not happy. Hmm. He, his goal is to stop Batman from being Batman. He wants Bruce to be happy and not right. depressed and being Batman. So he's doing yeah. everything. So like the whole breaking the bat idea is here. Boy, I am sick of seeing Bane break people's back. I mean, I get yeah. that he did it once. That he doesn't yeah, have to be his go-to move it's so no, crazy i think so it, it, uh, the point is like the idea that gotham is being taken over by the villains i just don't understand how it's allowed by everyone else and <laughs> i don't yeah. under i don't really understand how batman has been beaten in these situations um you know i think of like no man's land and they kind of went out of their way a bit too much to explain why other superheroes and the government aren't yeah. helping gotham in this situation um mm -hmm. and i just feel like they over explain it especially because if they had just waited 20 years we'd all be like yeah of course the government wouldn't help this city um <laughs> but with this i feel like i could have used an explanation of like where's where's any other superhero being like oh wait killer croc yeah. shouldn't be the police mm -hmm. <laughs> you know speaking of the flash where's the flash in this yeah um, call him up and so it just feels very messy i don't really feel like what he, he's trying he goes for the same kind of thing that no man's went for except it's mm -hmm. bane and now this evil thomas wayne and it gets more focused in the second volume when it gets more focused about thomas wayne and stuff mm -hmm. but i just i don't know i guess when i saw the title city of bane i was like sick this should be exciting every yeah. time i i talk i get into something like the whole war of jokes and riddles i'm like okay sure riddler and joker are gonna be yep. duking it out they're they're at war because they're kind of similar but they're not mm -hmm. and then you read it like oh this is something different it strikes the it strikes me huh. that tom king is trying to be more mature than he thinks past batman things have been but it also mm. just becomes messy and boring mm -hmm. so i don't know he's he's interesting i mean i for the most part i i no i don't even know if i liked if i could say i liked his mr miracle but i just thought it was interesting mm. but i don't know 85 issues of batman and now he's doing the batman catwoman 12 issue series but that's right yeah under the black label i think and okay. he's, he said it's kind of standalone. He's doing a bit of a Mask of the Phantasm. But if he thinks he's the first person, I love the to Mask of the Phantasm. Mask of the Phantasm. He's crazy. Um, so I don't know. Wow. We'll see. 
I'm sure yeah. it'll just be more of like bat, cat, bat, cat, bat, cat. <laughs> Shut up. Gosh. <sighs> yeah, I'll uh, well, I'll let you know when I get there. I'm gonna I see... did read one other DC Comics thing, and that was Static Shock, The Rebirth of Cool by Dwayne McDuffie. Is this like uh, contemporary with the show? I don't really know where this falls, actually. I mean, this is a, the only Static Shock that I've read was the New 52 Static Shock, which was bad. This is actually Dwayne McDuffie who created the character for Milestone Comics, which right. DC now owns back in the day. When this I looked up the, the cover, it looked like it came out in 2001. His, I mean, the 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 costume does, is rem, more reminiscent of the one you see in the show. So it must be. I mean, it, it must be connected in that way. Have you ever watched but, the show? No, not really. Because you've been really into like reading Static Shot stuff, but like... That'd be like if all you've ever done is read the Batman Beyond comics. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, this series came out in 2001, January yeah. in Sept through September 2001. So Yeah. So, I mean, I liked it. I actually thought this was I was like I said I was underwhelmed with the new 52 stuff, but this is back with the original creator. I wish that the app had more static shock on. I wish it had more of the milestone uh titles. And I feel like DC's working on milestone stuff so maybe they'll start coming on the app more and more because this series wasn't on there when i read the new 52 static shock and that wasn't that long ago so this is this is a recent addition to it like i said it's a much better use of the character i mean back in the original creator's hands and everything but all it really did was make me want to go back and find the 45 issues of static that came before this mm -hmm. so i'd like to do that someday but so well, far i'm just reading what's available it was uh, there's 52 episodes of the cartoon out there if you also want yeah. to do that. Yeah. My wife loved that. I feel like I was a little like on the old side when that came out. 2000 I, I... 2000 no wait. Hold on. I can do this. Okay. It was on from September 2000 to May 2004. So Yeah, so I mean that was like when I was graduating high school. A little bit after Batman Beyond showed up on the scene, but yeah. a little bit also before Justice League showed up. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a fun future episode where they brought Static Shock into the Justice League cartoon. That's cool. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah, you were probably a bit too old for kids WB at the time. You were probably like, yeah, but where's Teen WB? Although, but I loved the Batman, and that was even later, so. Yeah. Maybe I'm just fickle. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Fickle nickel. Did you read anything else, or are you, is that everything for you? I read three volumes of Tom King's Batman. That takes a lot out of okay. a person. Well, I was just trying to decide if you wanted me to talk about Shazam Family Giant, the big red cheese, or not. I mean, I don't know if I do or not, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, as you know, I'm a sucker for Shazam, always have been. And what I read here was a collection put together. Um, I got this through drive Through Comics, which is a, a basically a digital comic shop. And uh, the mini comics line takes a lot of old public domain comics and cleans them up and puts them in these little collections. And they're, I mean, this was 99 cents and it was a hundred pages of classic like Shazam family stories. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did really enjoy this Shazam. I mean, when you're talking about forties and fifties, it's really impressive how advanced I feel like those stories are. And this was just more of that. This ended up being primarily just Shazam stories. And I was kind of disappointed because I prefer like the them. Well, I prefer the Mary Marvel stuff. Mm. And um, yeah, it, Junior was hardly in it at all. So I was a little disappointed with that. But they do a really nice job. I mean, they're black and white. But um, this, when you look up scans, usually they're really in terrible shape. Mm -hmm. But this is nice and clear and, and um, well put together. So yeah, I, uh, if you're a fan of this kind of stuff, it, it's a great it's a great venue for it. Because, you know, I downloaded these 100 pages for a buck and now they are mine. So I had a good time. I had a good okay. time with the big red cheese. And that's it as far as things that I've read. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I guess I watched two episodes of the X-Men animated series. But if you care about oh. that, you can just listen to previously on X-Men. Ah, oh, you guys it. are back. Yeah. Because you, you, you were we gone We had a little while. bit of hiatus, but we did Logan. Yeah. And now we did these episodes. And then yeah. we're going to do Logan. the Sentinels character spotlight and a little Christmas. You're doing a... S I would argue that the Sentinels are not characters, but I'll... All right. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I've gotten some pushback on the show. It's not. It's not always easy. But Wait, I, did I, you say you're? Did you say you're doing a Christmas episode? We, we're we're gonna cover like a Christmas comic that the X Men. Yeah. We've done a few. So I love a, it. Uh, there's. I love a Christmas I'm episode. Trying to pick one. There's the Kitty Pride has a classic one where she's like being yeah. chased by an alien monster on Christmas. Mm -hmm. So. I remember that. Yeah. 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 So maybe that cool. issue. 
Just a quick. I one. guess next week, next week will be our Christmas episode here on Comic Book Coffee Break. I, there's a Larflees Christmas special that I've been saving for just such an occasion. So uh, I'll tell you about the yeah, Larflees Lar Christmas Lar special yeah. next week. Yeah. Uh, I pulled a weird one out of the quarter bin yeah, today. Are you, you did ready not for that? Pick a character that is. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't let this kid. I wouldn't let this character babysit. Plastic Man. So this is Plastic Man uh, number 13, original cover price, 30 cents. From the 70s. 1976. It says, you're dead, Plastic Man. I'm your exact double. Anything you can do, I can do better. Yeah, so he's Rubber so, Man? Right away, you're quoting Annie Get Your Gun, and I don't feel intimidated. But this was, this is maybe the strangest quarter bin pick I've ever done, because I finished this like rereading this and I truly don't understand the tone that they were trying to go for. All I know is that they failed. So, so did you like plastic man when you were younger? Well, plastic man had his own show oh, right. had an animated series um, where it was plastic man and a team and they were kind of like PIs uh -huh. and that was on sort of concurrently with super friends. Uh -huh. um, so that was, that was really my introduction. And I had a, I had a couple of uh, DC Comics like vinyl records that had songs and stuff, and there was Plastic Man songs and a uh -huh. Plastic Man story on it. Uh -huh. So that record is probably the reason why I liked Plastic Man as much as I did. Uh -huh. I've not read a bunch of Plastic Man, and reading this, uh, that streak is going to continue. Mm -hmm. There's He's a sight gag. I like his sight gags. Yeah. Like in Justice League, even in Grant Morrison's Justice League, they'll, they'll say something and like, oh no, what do we do? And like, Plastic Man has turned into a grandfather clock. And that's, yeah. that's the only thing he's contributing to that panel. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> that's it. Anyway. Yep. yep. All right. So this, we start with Superman mm -hmm. flying through space towards the interstellar council. And sure. it's a good thing he's there because they're discussing wiping out earth because they just feel oh, it's too gosh. primitive. And they're like, Superman, I mean, you're a Kryptonian, you know how primitive earth is. And uh -huh. he's like, okay, well, yes, earth is primitive, but not everything is bad. Before you do this, you need to come down and visit. Let me show you the good that mankind can do. So they agree, and they follow him to the Earth. He takes him to just an average place. They end up outside a grocery store. They go in. The aliens are intrigued by a large display of Hostess cupcakes. It's an ad, baby. Uh, Superman scoops up all the Hostess. They, they start shoving the devil's food cake in their mouth, and they say, if Earth can produce food like this, it deserves to survive. The grocer is demanding you know pay, what? and Superman <laughs> says, bill it to Clark Kent. They did that in uh, the Hostess. Dragon Ball Superman, uh, the Dragon Ball Super movie. There was a uh, battle of gods, and like the god was like, wow, Earth food is great. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe they got it from this. Now, on to the main story. Plastic Man, if I kill me, will I die? We start in Amarillo, <laughs> Texas, and I, I don't, I, I offer no apology for this. I don't understand. We start in Amarillo, Texas, where Amelia Roost is given an award, a local award, for her hog call. It's the best hog call in Amarillo, Texas. Back at NBI headquarters, and no, I don't know what that means. Plast and the gang, NBI, NBI. Plast and the gang are planning a trip to Amarillo, a little R and R, but they're going undercover, so they're not recognized. It's decided that one guy will be uh, a trombone player. Plastic Man will be his trombone. And I'm just going to let that hang there for a minute. Cut to Amarillo. And we see a man Pucker up. playing playing <laughs> Plastic Man as a trombone. And he's just blowing and blowing, but no sound is coming out. <laughs> I'm not making it up. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Here's the thing. His cheeks are puffed out and red, and they're like, why is no sound coming out? But so it doesn't wait. stop him. Maybe I don't want to get into it. But, okay. Like, we do have... Never mind. It's fine. Okay. I don't want to know which end is which. I don't... No, I don't either. I don't either. Um, <laughs> and then, then we run into Robbie Reed. Robbie Reed was the lead character from Dial H for Hero, but something is wrong something is going on he is sort of in a trance-like state almost and he is obsessed with this woman named rachel evans like that's feels it felt to me like he was like um like hypnotized or something and that was just like he had this one track mind i don't know All right. uh, elsewhere amelia roos the hog caller from the beginning is practicing her hog call and the noise kind of disrupts him and throws him off and he seems to snap back into it for a minute oh, all right no not a hog call i know Our so hypnotist. uh 
so at this resort where they're at, where Plastic Man is being played as a trombone, trouble starts going up. And so uh, Robbie Reed in this weird state is like, oh, I've got to use my Dial H for Hero device. So he does it and he turns into Mighty oh, yeah. Moppet. So he's just like a little, like a baby superhero. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he's clearly evil. Like he's got a real evil vibe about him. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> Plastic Man is still a trombone. And he sees the trouble happening. But he doesn't want to alert people to the fact that this man has been playing Plastic Man as a trombone the whole time. Uh -huh. So while they're looking elsewhere, he crawls out still as a trombone. And comes in and they fight. And he gets Robbie to stop. Uh, but then comes he becomes a trombone again because he doesn't want anybody to be like on to him that Plastic Man is there. So Robbie, meanwhile, is like, "What? Why? Why was I an evil baby superhero? What's going on?" While this is happening, he runs into Amelia Roos, the Hog Call champion, and he is so grateful to her for like snapping him out of it for a minute. But then he feels like maybe he's evil again, and he's like, "I love you. I want to marry you." And so they start making out. Very confusing. Um. Very confusing. So Robbie's back uh, in the room and he's full on evil again. And he's trying to settle on like a super villain persona. And he settles on one and he goes and he fights Plastic Man. And in this in the scuffle, the Dial H for Hero device is like damaged. And so when he picks it up, he turns into Plastic Man for about a second. And it's not really a thing. Um, okay, so they're fighting Plastic Man versus Robbie Reed as Plastic Man. Meanwhile, in the other room, the hog call competition is going on, and she does this super long hog call, and for whatever reason, this wipes Robbie's mind of the programming or whatever he had, and he's back to normal, but he doesn't remember anything after he met this mysterious Rachel Evans, meaning he doesn't remember Amelia, doesn't remember that he professed his love and that they're going to get married. So she's at winning the hog call competition, realizing that Robbie's not there, and weeps. And Plastic Man and the gang get called back to headquarters because there's been enough fooling around. The end. Okay. And this is I, this is what you I would say an essential Plastic Man story. <laughs> I do, it's so weird because it's real. I don't know if they're like trying to revive the Dial H for Hero, but it gives you nothing. Like it right. really, really throws you in. Tonally, I could not understand. Like, is all this supposed to be funny? Is it absurdist? Is it serious? I really don't know. I really, really don't know. So hmm. all I know is that I don't like it. Do you remember your feelings about this when you bought it? I think this is one of the really old ones. And I think really I was just looking at the pictures more than anything else because I don't remember reading this story. Okay. Um, but I do. I remember it very clearly, like the two plastic men fighting. And I remember Robbie like changing in. So I think visually it is interesting to look at. Right. Um, the story's nonsense, though. Is this certainly did not make me want to like the Commandy book and the New Teen Titans last week, even though it was real steamy, um, did make me kind of want to revisit those those yeah. runs. This yeah. makes me want to run from Plastic Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so, usually I see Plastic Man. I'm like, no, I'm okay. Yeah. You don't want to accept a drink from a Plastic Man. No. no. Oh, and you certainly don't want to play him like a trombone. Oh my word. <laughs> All right. So Plastic Man. Yep. There we go. Okay. The Weird Al of superheroes. Yeah. No. I mean, True. the fact that you didn't get Weird Al to play a live-action Plastic Man is crazy. Boy, he voices him, though, right? He voices him in the shorts? Does he? I know he voices Animal Man. Animal Man. I'm pretty sure there's a Weird Al Plastic Man okay. out there. Good. I'm pretty it sure. Makes sense. Do you have a Batman you do want to recommend this week? No, I've read three Batmans. I'm okay. Okay. There's a lot. Maybe, right. And we'll see how I feel about the three Jokers next week. All right, we'll so, see how yeah, it goes. We'll be talking three. I'll be talking three jokers at least. I don't know what else. Okay. Uh, come, oh, hopefully the end of the Wicked and Divine, and then this uh, three jokers thing. But Nick, Nick, there's three jokers. Oh no, yeah. three jokers and a baby. Like, is one of them Ted Danson? Is one of them Steve Gutenberg? Uh, no, but the baby is Jason Todd. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's kind of cute. I actually have I'm I'm on to some X-Men reading in my list. I was going to read Neil Adams like the first X-Men oh, yeah. thing. Cuz uh, I don't know, you know, like I'm sort of weirdly into those terrible Neil Adams uh like the ones he did for DC. The Superman one was fun. I think Coming of the Superman, the Batman one was truly well, horrific. I mean, the, but his yeah? his stuff with X-Men is held pretty highly. Like as a writer though? 
Uh, well, it's when Roy Thomas shows up. Okay, this is this is like a 2012 miniseries about Wolverine and Sabretooth being like a proto X Men team. Oh, the like the first X Men. Yes. Oh, yeah. never mind. Then. I was gonna. No, I was that's gonna not read supposed that. to be any good. I don't. Well, I didn't think so, but I feel like I've read all the DC ones, so like I have to. Okay. Uh, I was gonna read that, and I was gonna start um, Grant Morrison's new X Men. What do you think? You think I'm gonna like that? I do not know. It's one okay. I've rec- I I in my youth I recommended it to you. In my blind youth, when I didn't understand fully, now I would be. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I can't. I can't even make an educated guess. It's very oh, we'll see how I feel. different. Uh, you might think it's too weird. You might like it. Okay. How do you we'll do? You like Gene? Sometimes. I rem- I'm pretty. I don't know because I think it's a cool Cyclops. You might not like his Cyclops. Mm-mm. I don't. It also it had a lot of rotating artists, and there. I remember one art just being awful. One one book's art being terrible. I guess we'll see. It's been a while since I've read Green Lantern, so I think I'm going to try some Green Lantern as well, back okay. for DC. All right. So, anyway. Yeah. Um, I wait with bated breath over your new X-Men read. Good. All right. Well, I'll let you know. In your Neil Gaiman Eternals run. Yes. Well, I've already mentioned my other Radio Meanwhile gig, 902 and Here We Go. We're in the midst of season four of 902 and 0. But even if you're not a fan, you can drop in for the Christmas special, USS Christmas. You don't need any prior knowledge to enjoy the good time Kendra and I had talking about that bad Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. Outside of the Radio Meanwhile network, I'm the host of How's Things, the official podcast and radio show of the David A. Howe Public Library. We have a series of Christmas specials going on right now. So go over there and listen to that. I did an interview with Melody Carlson, who's one of my all-time favorite Christmas artists, Mm -hmm. authors, Christmas authors. Yeah, writing is an art. uh, Yeah, that's true. So that's coming up. So you can check that out. We had a good Mm. conversation. What about you, Eric? Where Uh, can the world find you? Besides this, previously on X-Men, where we talk X-Men comics and everything. And I am going to make sure we have a good time on the Sentinel episode. We're going to talk about the history of the Sentinels and... That yes. means Nimrod. That means Bastion. That means Master Mold. That means Mother Mold. <laughs> I'll make sure to have a big, big old pot of coffee for that episode uh, for thank your co host. Yeah. And uh, then we're, I also am on 90s Music's Got Me Like, where we talk mm-hmm. a 90s song every episode. Last week was All Star. This week was uh, Losing My Religion. And we got a Christmas episode next week. I love Christmas episodes. That's exciting. Losing My Religion ties into 902 and 0 quite a bit. Did you guys talk about that? We did talk about how, and uh, to quote nice. my co-host, Kendra, she said, uh, Losing My Religion is the perfect song for a relationship like Dylan and Brenda because they are hmm. constantly losing their religion over each other. I'm going to have to check my uh, spam folder because I did not get an invite to guest star in that episode. I'm sure <laughs> it probably just went. It's fine. Don't worry well, about it. Well, you know, I'll, once, I'll uh, once Seal turned us down i just didn't have the heart to try anymore yeah i so, understand yeah that makes sense <laughs> kiss from a rose oh boy that was michael okay. mcdonald's all right kiss from a rose Not... <laughs> you don't know me <laughs> yeah all right uh that's it have a good one everybody this was comic coffee break sure was bye <laughs>